In a state with as much high school football talent as Florida, it takes a lot to stand out. But getting noticed is a little easier when you're literally head and shoulders above the rest. Six foot five inch quarterback Chase Litton can see the field like few high school quarterbacks can. Six five is a very good advantage because now you can see over, you can you can see the field, you can see what's going on. It's tremendous. I, I remember I can't remember the times I've seen other teams' balls batted down and having like a six foot six foot one quarterback, but. Um, being 6'5 helps a lot, and having a higher release point even helps even better. Of course, being tall is only a part of what makes Chase an intriguing prospect. He's been a four-year starter for Wharton High School in Tampa, and he's accumulated over 7,000 yards passing in his high school career. Just watch, you know, his pours and so forth, uh, watch him how he throws the uh, ball, um, as far as uh, his uh, trajectory, his height, his athleticism, those type of things that made us say, well, this, this guy can be a good quarterback. I try to try best to be a leader for the team, and um, I know some of the younger guys have just been growing up, and I played Pop Warner with most of them, and uh, when they see me, they expect me to lead them, and, and just that's what I, I, my main goal is to do. Chase is rated as a three-star prospect by most recruiting services, and that's why he always feels he has something to prove. This past summer, when he was up against some of the best in the nation at the Elite 11 camp, he went out and made a statement with a strong performance. When I went to Elite 11 and I just felt that like not a lot of people knew who I was and, and I felt like I, I should prove to them that I can play with them. And uh, I remember seeing like when I first walk in some five-star recruit quarterback and four stars everywhere and then, and then I, I'm sitting there like, okay, so these are the guys I'm going to have to compete with. And I just felt that I went in there, chip on my shoulder, confident, and I, I had a great day. And I ended up winning Golden Gun. I only missed one target on that, so I felt pretty confident about that and I felt that I left my mark there. But what Chase does on the football field doesn't define who he is. That comes from his family, who taught him, among other things, how to give back and care for someone in need. Chase has two biological brothers, but he also has an adopted brother, Sean Van Zant, whose story sounds like a script out of Hollywood. Back in 2006, when Chase was in fifth grade, Sean Van Zant was homeless. Sean's mother passed away when he was young, and his father and older brother were dealing with financial and legal troubles. His situation had gotten so bad, he resorted to sleeping in his car a few times. That's when Chase's mother, Lisa, whose sons knew Sean from school, stepped in. We adopted him. My mom, we brought him home for a day, a day turned to a week, months, and then it's just been a story for ever, ever since. Finally, with a comfortable living situation, Sean would excel on the basketball court. He would earn a scholarship to Butler University, where he got to go to two Final Fours. And the Litton family enjoyed the whole ride with him. I remember my eighth grade year, uh, I was in a basketball tournament, and um, my mom just starts like jumping up and down in the stands, and, and I mean, it was like a dull moment of the game. And so we just look up in the stands like, what is, what is going on? And we were all waiting, because they were in the Elite Eight at the time when we were at that tournament. And you see her bawling, crying, screaming like, we're going to the Final Four, we're going to the Final Four. I and mean, that, that feeling right there was awesome. The next day we flew out there and saw the semifinals and then the national championship. It was just, it was wonderful. For me, I couldn't even imagine for him. Sean is now playing professionally in Canada, and Chase has always been inspired by the unforgettable experience of taking in someone in need and then watching his dreams come true. He'll definitely never forget when his brother was a Gordon Hayward miracle shout away from becoming a national champion. We're about, about five, six rows up. I mean, I remember, I don't think I sat down after a made shot one time. They ended up cut it to one. The guy made the first one, then he missed the second. And um, he caught it and took two dribbles from half court and just launched it. And, from the angle we were at, we're like, oh, this is going in, it's going in, it's going in, and then it hits the backboard, and then it, as soon as it falls off, everyone just, like, wow, like, that was, it wasn't like a, like, let's break down and get upset, but, like, that was a great game. It was, I've never seen a game like that, and the rush and the feeling for that was just awesome. Now Chase is focused on his own dreams. As his career as a Wharton Wildcat winds down, he'll spend the winter making sure he finds the right fit for college. Because just like his family taught him, Chase wants to be a winner in life as much as he does in football. College-wise, I just, I just want to go be successful and, and go to a school that's more of a 40-year commitment than a four. You have to realize that every, football's going to come to an end, and after that, there's life after football. And so um, I want to go to a school that's going to give me a great scholarship and, and just have a successful four years or three years even, and then just, just go from there and just be happy and, and just be successful on and off the field.